What we like to do at our dental practice here is we like to screen patients, ask them a few questions from a, a designated list of questions that will help us rule in or rule out his sleep apnea as possibly being a problem. Nowadays, insurance companies are a lot more uh, available and amicable to doing at-home sleep testings, which is pretty easy. Um, falls underneath your medical insurance. We can have it mailed to you. You sleep with the device for a couple nights, mail it back to where it was sent from. Physician reads it, and then we get the results and then can talk about the best ways to approach uh, alleviating the problem. Um, typically, dental devices are used to move the lower jaw forward. When you move the lower jaw forward, because the tongue is attached to the lower jaw, it'll bring the tongue with it, so that when you fall asleep, your jaw can't fall back, and then the tongue can't fall back, and then you can't collapse the airway. So these devices look something like this. This is one that's called a dorsal because it's got a couple of attachments to it that look like the dorsal fin of a porpoise. The common thread between these devices is there's gonna be an upper piece and there's gonna be a lower piece. And so what it does is it prevents the lower jaw from falling back. Preventing the lower jaw from falling back prevents the tongue from occluding the airway. So yes, we get a patient in one of these and have them wear them for a couple of weeks subjectively how are you feeling you know objectively what are we seeing if we feel like we need to advance the jaw forward a little bit we simply gain access to this little keyway here and activate the device and it moves the jaw forward a little bit further preventing it from falling back so we can titrate the device until we get to the point where the apneic events are greatly diminished and the patient's sleeping and feeling better and more rested and uh, ready to tackle the day